Even in a first world food paradise like Singapore, there are those who struggle to afford a decent meal. Thankfully, there are over a hundred organisations feeding the hungry in Singapore. From cooked food to dry rations, help is in abundance. That can't be a bad thing, right? If they reject some, people will tell them that a beggar cannot be a chooser. Like this, this is disgusting. I really don't think that we should be giving this to the, our old folks and young people. On one spectrum, you've got so much food waste. And on one spectrum, you have people saying that, OK, tonight is just sausages. Why is that so? Can one receive too much help? And can food aid actually do more harm than good? Many old folks find it difficult to get a meal because they are in frail health. Heading out to buy food or cooking a simple meal is more challenging than we think. In Singapore, they are fortunate they can rely on social service agencies, charities or volunteer groups like these. 88-year-old Auntie Lo is one of them. Every Wednesday, without fail, she picks up food rations distributed by a temple. These rations save her a trip to the supermarket and can be used to put together a simple meal, fast. All's good, except she has too much of the same things. Everything you see here is accumulated over three months. Fionn is the founder of Keeping Hope Alive, a volunteer group helping residents living in rental blocks. Every Sunday, they give out porridge and clean up flats. Some items are unsuitable for Auntie Lo as well. We found sugar laden canned fruit like these, even though she has diabetes. And our most shocking discovery. According to Auntie Lo, old folks who reject rations once would have their names taken off the recipient list. We reached out to the temple involved, but we did not get a reply. Auntie Lo is not the only one who receives more than enough food. Eighty-year-old Uncle Ho has arthritis, which greatly restricts his movement. He also has diabetes. He gets free daily lunch and dinner from a charity kitchen. But that's not all. Shortly after Uncle Ho brought us up to his flat, another packet of food arrived. Lunch from his Meals on Wheels provider. So the Meals on Wheels program is run by the Agency of Integrated Care. It engages service providers to deliver subsidised meals um, to seniors who are referred by hospitals, polyclinics and their caregivers. 
Uncle Ho receives both lunch and dinner from his service provider, which means he is receiving a total of four packets of food a day. And when we dropped by over Chinese New Year, we found even more food. Oh. Okay. In the previous episode, we saw how some Singaporeans have little choice when it comes to what they can afford to eat each day. Nothing inside my my fridge. Eh? Want to see? I got nothing, right? But Uncle Ho has more than he can eat. One day, what do you <laughs> so we tracked the food that Uncle Ho received over the course of one week and asked the dietitian if it was suitable for him. Now what you see here is a sample of the food that he got. In general, there is a good variety of meats and also vegetables which helps Uncle Ho get all the nutrients he needs. What's missing here is actually fibre from fruits. He's given oranges but he doesn't really like to eat them. I also noticed that Uncle Ho doesn't have any teeth so it made me wonder if it's difficult for him to chew all these. Oh, then you eat how do you eat it? Food that's steamed, braised or porridge would be easier for him to eat. Like the cooked food that he receives, the food rations do not always match his needs. He was given this bag of biscotinas and he has no clue what they are. What is excessive are things that are not quite suitable. So if you in your macaroni and cheese, and I, I can't give that out to say a senior citizen because they wouldn't know how to consume it. So it may be fancy food, food but for us, it's about something that's familiar to the beneficiaries. Clearly, the food and donations that these seniors get could be improved. Yet, they are hesitant to say anything about it. Give this group a chance, give them a choice. 58-year-old Esther Lim has daily access to free cooked food from a charity kitchen that delivers to her neighbourhood. But after years of eating their food, Esther has gotten tired of it. Esther has tried to give feedback, but it didn't go down well with the volunteers who were distributing the food. You can't keep doing things by giving without thinking. I've seen all the heart pain from all the food wastage because we didn't ask them what they want to eat. Niza is the founder of Free Food for All and they've been in the business of feeding people for six years. He gets feedback from his beneficiaries regularly and while some of it can be helpful, he's noticed that some beneficiaries can get fussy. I didn't expect this at first. But when I started to give them milk, cheese, things that they normally can't afford, then they realised that they are entitled to it. And if it's not one of those premium milk, then they don't want it. I think um, a lot of people are expecting a lot more from the food that they receive. Standard of living in general has been going up every year. And I think it's only right that we also try to give them a better range of food as well. Food assistance groups are trying their best to help. But why is it that some get too much while others might not have enough? According to the Ministry of Social and Family Development, Areas with a sizable and older cluster of rental flats tend to be more well-known to and thus better served by food support organisations. The flip side is that others go underserved, especially those who don't live in rental flats. That means there are families going hungry who aren't on anyone's radar. According to our research, in Angmokyo, there are 23 blocks of one 
and two-room rental flats, and at least nine food assistance providers. They have basically told us that between free food for all and whatever they're getting for rest, it's just like too much for them to consume. So we are going to uh, let that go or we are trying to move to another location. We should be sharing information a lot better so that we can reduce the duplication. A lot of people start all these NGOs with a very good heart. They plough in their own resources. They are also frequently doing good work. Yeah, it's just that a lot of their effort also goes down. Maybe these elderly are already serviced like five times a week, twice a day. I'm in Jalan Kuko, one of the older HDB estates in Singapore, which has seen many volunteers come in to offer help over the years. Volunteer Switchboard is a social enterprise that has been serving the old folks and families here for six years. They give out food rations once every month. A lot of people ask me, so Jalan Kuko is overserved, why are you still there? But when we're there, we realise there's a lot more issues. Everybody comes in as an ad hoc kind of basis. You can't really sustain and you can't see how can you evolve and improve the program. The ad hoc ones, we see them slowly drop out. One group was there to just give bread. Then suddenly we realise that they are gone. When groups distribute food on an ad hoc basis, that's when problems like mismatch needs also arise because there's limited understanding of the people they are feeding. Because some people think that, ayah, this kind of thing is a lot of logistics. If you have to ask one by one, it's very difficult. How can we pack to individual needs? Uh, that is the problem. So ideally, food packs should be customised to different groups of beneficiaries. But food assistance groups are often constrained by donations from the public. For instance, when people donate food that's not suitable for the elderly. <laughs> Groups like the Food Bank Singapore have donation drives that allow the public to chip in, but some items have to be rejected. Like uh, this, this kind of stuff, there's no expiry date, there's no label, and it's like obviously open, so we do not, we are unable to accept such donations, uh, because due to uh, food safety reasons, anything that's open, contaminated with air, you know, it's not very safe to donate this. Yeah, it's open. Yeah, half drink water. 2019 as well, expired. <laughs> 2019 expired. Providers of cooked meals too are constrained by circumstances. The people who receive the food usually complains about taste. Why the same thing? People come, they give we use. Willing Hearts has been cooking and delivering meals to the needy since 2005. Like sometimes there's a season, for example, there's flooding in Malaysia, so we don't get so much green vegetables, so we're eating Chinese cabbages for many days. But however, there's still Chinese cabbages to eat, right? Every day, Willing Hearts delivers 6,500 meals to beneficiaries island-wide. But because they are short of volunteers, they can only deliver meals once a day in the morning. And that includes both lunch and dinner. Occasionally, we do hear of it that people do not know how to uh, store them nicely or heat them up again. In the future, like I said, if, if there's possibility of more volunteers coming or organisations, then we could have served dinner in the afternoon as well. But for now, uh, that's, that's what best we can do. Feeding the hungry is clearly a complex issue, but the food assistance groups have ideas on how to give better moving forward. One of the proposed solutions to food insecurity is to look at the other end of the spectrum, food waste. We have all the food that we need to eat. We waste a lot of food and we have food insecurity. This just doesn't make sense to me. Can we eliminate all the people who are food insecure in Singapore just by working together to redistribute food better? SG Food Rescue is a ground-up group that collects unsellable produce from markets and wholesale centres. Every week, they can collect five to 700 kilograms of fruits and vegetables. Part of it is given to charities such as Beyond Social Services and Free Food for All. It's better because it's ready, real food, got nutrition for small kids, it's better. SG Food Rescue also helps to stock seven community fridges in Singapore. Those in need can select fresh produce from these fridges. At the same time, you don't go hungry and you eat more healthily.
more food assistance groups are also looking to vary or improve the food rations given to their beneficiaries. We go and um, stock seniors at the, the Seng Song nearby to see what seniors buy, what they eat and how they eat. After stocking their beneficiaries, Volunteer Switchboard made a couple of changes to their food packs. In the past, they gave three-in-one coffee packs. But then they noticed that old folks prefer using condensed milk, not sugar, to sweeten their coffee. So, they replaced the three-in-one coffee with kopio kosong and condensed milk. Also, not every senior can finish a huge can of sardines in one go. So, to avoid waste, Volunteer Switchboard gives out these single-serving cans instead. And then we'll ask them, do you use every item that we buy? Then they will say, I don't eat this, you take it back, which is great because it will promote less food wastage as well. Meanwhile, Esther recently started receiving customizable food packs from her food rations provider as well. Instead of being dependent on volunteers, some beneficiaries are now able to get their food rations anytime from food banks' vending machines, which allow beneficiaries to purchase at least 25 items a month, with store credits topped up for them in a cash card. Touch Community Services has also partnered with Deliveroo Riders to bring meals to beneficiaries in the Meals on Wheels program. And then, there's this. These come in a box of 36 meals. You can see that they are savoury dishes like buttermilk prawns, rice with lentils, and there's even dessert. These really come in handy because they don't have to be refrigerated, so they won't spoil if you keep it for long. And you can eat it straight out of the pouch, with or without warming up. FFA's Niza came out with this idea so that beneficiaries can enjoy more variety and volunteers only need to make deliveries once a month. So it serves a particular need. Those who can't cook, those who are non ambulant those who are elderly, those living alone. But even bigger things are in motion. We've got to bring the think tanks into the same room, discuss, stretch it out. There's a new task force in town involving several ministries, food assistance groups and food rescuers. They are finding a way to allocate resources better to help those who are food insecure and this starts with building trust and collaboration among the groups. We all come together, explore ideas, exchange views and then we're able to better coordinate among ourselves when it comes to the matching of demand and supply, distribution, sourcing for food. So MSF has uh, been a facilitator in this, this whole process. Many NGOs uh, are organically driven by ground needs and they develop their own purpose of existence and quite a number of them could be very different and they had some kind of conflict as well. So one of the key objectives of the work group is let's break that silo thoughts and then think about ways we can synergize our output. Hello! Do you have any bread for me today? What could also be a game changer? A good Samaritan law, which might be proposed this year. Hotels, restaurants and other food businesses would then be able to donate excess food to a good cause with less worry about liability. While we are waiting for all this to happen, here's what we can do. This one is pretty good, oh, right? Yeah, this is expired. April, April 2021, right? This is pretty good, like four months left on the expiry date, right. on the shelf life, and then, you know, still good condition, right? No rust, no dents. So, I mean, canned food is fine, but, you know, we can have more like mushrooms, you know, more vegetables, rather than just like, lunch and meat, right? Yeah, so, it's the small things that make a difference in their lives. Huh? Okay. Your child comes back from school and say there's a food drive in their school. What do you do? Do you open up your pantry and take out what your child doesn't want to eat and donate it? Or do you take out items that, oh, you know, my child enjoys this and I think another child would enjoy that. If everyone plays their part, um, I think we would be very happy to collect the food and distribute it out. And I think the beneficiaries will be very happy to receive them. Thank you.